is Dr. Trish Lee with another neurofeedback answer to your question. Today's question is about aphasia. Aphasia is a speech and language challenge that typically results from stroke or other insult or injury to the brain. So many times if a person sustains a stroke, it impacts blood flow to many areas of the brain. So depending upon which areas of the brain were impacted by the stroke. So I guess I'll back up for a second. What I mean by impacting blood flow is blood flow and oxygen do not get to specific areas of the brain during the stroke. What happens then is there's cell death or cell disorder based upon that decreased blood flow and oxy oxygen flow. So the cells no longer work properly. So our cells regenerate and repopulate. So even after the cells come back, if they do, and sometimes they don't, that area of the brain struggles to function. So there's two different aspects in a stroke. There's structural damage and then there's functional damage. So after a stroke, if that area of the brain is no longer functioning, even though structure is not changing anymore, a person will have a problem. That problem tends to be aphasia, or there can be other motor problems in stroke as well. What aphasia impacts is there's multiple types of aphasia, but usually it's one, the other, or a combination of the two main types, Wernicke's aphasia and Broca's aphasia. Wernicke's area of the brain is back here in the left uh, area of our brain, left hemisphere back here, more towards the posterior area of our brain. Broca's area is closer up to the front. Broca's area has to do with formulation of language and then production of language. Wernicke's area is comprehension or understanding of what is being spoken to you. And again, sometimes there's a combination and there's other types of aphasia. But the idea is that a stroke, when it impacts the left hemisphere of the brain, then a person will have communication difficulties either in formulating what they want to say or understanding what others are saying to them. And the reason that is happening is because functionally those areas of the brain are no longer working or they're working very, very slowly. So if you remember how neurofeedback works is neurofeedback optimizes brain processing speed so that the brain can process information in real time. So if you had a QEEG brain map acquired after suffering a stroke and you were suffering from Wernicke's or Broca's aphasia, it would show up that those areas of the brain had lower absolute power or they were running too slow or a combination of the both. Then what neurofeedback would do is bring those very specific areas of the brain back online and improve their functioning again so that those skills and abilities can be performed by the individual. So hopefully that answers the question on aphasia and how neurofeedback can help aphasia. And many times if a person suffers from aphasia and they have had lots and lots of speech therapy, then neurofeedback can be a really great solution to move them even further in a shorter amount of time. Um, I'm licensed as a speech language pathologist and I started a very long time ago helping people with aphasia and now my practice is solely neurofeedback because of its efficiency and its efficacy in helping people regain the skills that they really want to get back so they can improve their quality of life. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, don't forget to like or subscribe below so that you can get your neurofeedback questions answered so you can control your brain so it does not control you. Thanks.